Hello everybody, brothers and sisters, family and friends across the nations of this world. Greetings, greetings, greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and Master Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Isaac Redu and I'm very happy um, today, this Sunday morning, to come your way to just do one thing, yes, to speak the mind of God to you, to share the words of the living God with you wherever you are so please don't go away in case it's the first time of watching me live from fire one tv or listen to me from the radio station then you are blessed this program is called the voice of salvation it comes away this and every sunday depending on the time that you are watching me live on this um tv station god bless you please don't go away because I believe in God that your life will never be the same. You will encounter the power of God and then the spirit of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Before I, before I proceed today, please let's have a word of prayer. Everlasting Savior will give you glory. There is none like you, O oh God. Today we confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of our God. Father, I I bring to you anybody, whoever that is listening to me live and under the sound of my voice into your hands, that Father, use me as a vessel to bless them today, O oh God. Father, impact generation, black or white, tall or short, anybody, O oh God, that you created, O oh God. Convince them and convict them by your power and transform them by your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of he who died and resurrected on son on the third day, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Today I would like to continue from where I ended last week. So, in case um, you never had that opportunity to listen to me, please just go back to the Facebook page and you have all the messages over there. Yes, just do it now. And please don't forget to invite your friends, everybody that you know, to come online right now to be connected to whatever that we are doing today. God bless you. Last week, I spoke about hold on fast to your crown hold on fast to your crown and i said crown simply stands for salvation the salvation that we have had what is salvation in the first place it means we have been moved from darkness to light now we have been saved from our sins we have been moved from the mortal life to the eternal life yes it means we have now accepted the works of jesus christ the son of god that god sent him to deliver us from the spiritual bondage from our sins that we inherited from our great grandfather and great grandmother that is our first parents adam and eve you know when they fell when they disobeyed the living god sin moved through the generations and sin became like a virus that moved from one generation to another generation till our time that is what the bible said that for all have sinned and we've fallen short of god's glory for all not only blacks or white or tall or short for all all the humanity all entire race of human beings we have sinned and we've fallen short of god's glory but looking at our situation God also sent, God made a provision, he made a plan, he sent his only begotten son to die for our sins and he also resurrected so that we shall be saved, so that we will be saved, so that we, anybody who received Jesus as the Lord and accept the works of Christ, now he is saved from darkness to come to the light of God. So listen, as I said, sin became like virus. Now let me give you an example. You know, this is what we have. We have COVID-19, coronavirus. You know, when somebody is, in, is infected or affected and uh, within a space of time and he or she comes into contact with anybody, maybe the next person also be affected, especially when they live in a room and there's no social distance. Look at how it spreads fast. 
the same applies to um, the sin virus yes sin virus that i'm talking about sin became like a virus and it ran through the generation it ran through generations generation till our day but god being so good he sent his only begotten son jesus christ hallelujah that is why death could not hold him captive so anybody who is under sin that person is dead although physically you are alive but you are dead to sin but anybody who comes to christ the person has now moved from darkness to light and the person has resurrected from death even though our mortal bodies yes one will die yes this flesh will die but our soul will appear before the living god and we shall be saved so crown stands for salvation in this perspective so we have to hold on to the salvation that we have had these are some of the teachings that we have to keep on teaching the pastors the prophets and apostles we have to teach the members today for them to know that they have to hold it they have to cherish it ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 the bible said that for we were saved by grace and not by our works that we shall we that we boast of what we are doing so it's by the grace but after we have received it, we have to also work it out. We have to maintain it. We have to hold on fast. If not, we fall. And then the salvation will be taken away from us. And I gave an example. A lot of people in the scriptures who fell, who could not contain all. They couldn't hold. They couldn't value what God gave them. I also said, salvation also, um, crown also stands for place of honor position of influence and prominence sometimes in life god can raise somebody from poor home poor background and brings you to a place of prominence god is expecting you to serve him to worship him with that position to make sure that you expose people you evangelize to people for them to know christ i said even marriage is a crown the office the the position that you occupy is a crown that god gives to us uh, look even in the field of politics that uh, being a president a mayor a, a minister senator whoever you are listening to me live now listen that it's a crown it's a place a position of honor and influence that god has given to you so you have to also influence people positively you must have a good impact in the lives of others when you lose your crown you find it difficult to come back again even wealth is crown that god gives to people and he is expecting the rich and whoever to hold on to to stick to it and also use it for, for the purpose for which it was given to them so when you are praying to god god bless me god expand my territories expect that or you must also think that you also use it for the purpose of which it was given to you hallelujah i gave typical examples about people who lost their crown first of all i gave an example as adam and eve in the scriptures when god gave them the garden of eden to be there forever but because they disobeyed god they lost their crown uh, and god also drove them from eden that is the presence of god he drove them out so god has every right to punish us god listen he doesn't fight with us i'll keep on saying and i'll repeat forever he doesn't fight us we are not co-equals of god so we can never fight with him he has the supremacy the authority to punish us when we sin so god punished them he drove them out he sacked them from his presence that is the garden of eden not them alone i also gave example esau Esau in the scriptures he is a twin brother a senior a senior brother of um this guy jacob and when he was hungry hungry one day he came home and his junior brother um jacob said before i give you food sell your birthright to me the Esau just made a statement but um, this thing is, is is normal okay i have given it to you by that pronouncement that he made spiritually he lost his birthright and all the blessings came to jacob i want to tell you that sometimes by our utterances by the things that we speak we commit ourselves and we also place curses upon our life so be careful about how you speak especially when you are in need or when you are happy when you are not aware of yourselves please don't make any promise 
make sure that you've come back to your senses and everything is normal don't let people push you to a tight corner before you make a decision no make a decision when you are stable in life if not you lose vital things before you come to a realization then you have made a great mistake in life ha ah, hallelujah i also cited another example and uh, many people we have something god anointed this guy to be powerful with strength something is just a physical embodiment of god's power to fight to deliver the jews from the hands of the philistines but he forgot about the rules governing his strength and when he disobeyed the voice of god now he was also a captive and he even died although god saved him but he also died with his enemies maybe god planned something greater than that but because he could not hold the crown he could not value what god gave him he lost it. he lost it another example is king saul king saul he was from the tribe of benjamin so in the tribe in the jewish culture those who were supposed to rule were supposed to come from the tribe of judah but god gave this kinship the rulership to saul but he couldn't manage he could not contain it well he he had the favor and then the grace of god to lead the people but he could not value and maintain it he couldn't hold on to the words of the living god and he also lost his crown many people in the scriptures they lost their crown having said that we also have a lot of people who were also faithful to god to the extent that they were able to maintain the crown maintain the position maintain the, the exposures that god gave them they were very faithful to the living god you can also be that i gave example to uh, about many people who lost their crown there are many people in the scriptures who also they didn't lose they they valued it they had a personal relationship with the living god so they maintained the crown the place of glory position of influence that god gave them and god also recommended them in the scriptures three people that i want to talk about noah job and daniel uh, let's read a scripture from ezekiel chapter 14 ezekiel chapter 14 verse 13 to 14 ezekiel from the prophet prophetic uh, book ezekiel chapter 14 verse 13 to 14 it reads son of man when the land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness by continuous unfaithfulness i will stretch out my hands against it i will cut off this its supply of bread send farming on it and cut off man and and beast from it verse 14 even if these three men noah daniel and job were in it they would deliver only themselves by righteousness by their righteousness said the lord god hallelujah god is making reference through the oracle of god that is ezekiel telling the people during his time that when people disobey god through persistent unfaithfulness he will cut them from the land the supply that he gives to them that is the bread the butter whatever the protections and whatever that he gives to them you you rather cut the supply and send famine on the land you send disease and what what have you mentioned that is why i said god initialized it. god has every means to punish us we are his children he loves us so much so when we are wrong like every parent when you are when your son your daughter or son is wrong about one or two things don't pamper him or her make sure that you put him in order punish him in the right context and in the right order make sure that the punishment will correct him it's not to cause harm to the child these days we pamper children a lot and the children also have their rights to even report us to the police as a as a parent any parent that you allow yourself for your child a daughter or a son to report you to the police remember that you are a bad parent you're a bad mom a bad dad you shouldn't move to that level no you have to correct them from the beginning from the onset when it things start started going out of hands listen that is why i said 
God will make sure that He corrects us by punishing us. So you have the right, the parental authority, to correct your kids when they are going wrong. If you don't correct them, they will commit errors and guilt that they will send them to correction centers. And that one will take the whole of their life. Hallelujah. So these three men, Bible said, but even if there is unfaithfulness on the land, these three guys, they will still be faithful to me. God is making this pronouncement about Noah. Why Noah? Let's go back to scriptures about what Noah did. Noah. Let's read Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. I read, Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of their thought, every intent of their thought, and of his heart, was only evil continually and the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart it came to a point in time in the in the generation of Noah they sin that is the spirit of wickedness intent of the heart their thought their mind listen one thing we I, I always group sin into two forms first one is um, that's from the scriptures iniquity and transgression transgression goes when you go when you do things against the law the law that God gave to Moses to the people of Israel so maybe do not kill when you kill it's transgression against the law and we also have iniquity that is our intent our thought that comes out what we think in our head sometimes you can think evil that is what the Bible said. Evil thought of his heart was only evil. The thought of his heart was only evil continually. Always they were thinking evil. So don't always say, but for me, I don't drink, I don't smoke, so I'm not a sinner. Some of us, we can sin by, we can sin by what we think of. How evil we think about others. And even sometimes covetousness. When we see people rising, then it pains us. We covet from our heart, from within us. And we wish that everything that happens, good things that happens to others, must happen to us. No, it must be us first. No, sometimes it must be somebody before it comes to you. So hold on to your peace. One day, God will bless you. Look, the Bible said the wickedness was continuous and God was grieved. Verse 7, so the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and in the beast, creeping things and bears of the earth. I am sorry that I have made them. Verse 8, contradiction, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, may you find the grace, may you find grace in the eyes of the Lord. When all people were sin sinning and committing errors and evil thoughts, the Bible said, but Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. It means even in his generation, he, he was still faithful to God. You see, we should not make a blank statement that this world is full of sin and we don't have even righteous person. Maybe it is you. But God still has God, He still has faithful people who are still serving Him faithfully and from their heart. Don't say this generation, people are doing wrong, wickedness, and whatever. We don't have pure and holy Christians today. Maybe it's you. If you have never made that research and you have never inquired from God, don't conclude that this world is full of sins and even we that we don't go to church, we are far more better than those who go to church. Please don't be wise in your own eyes. The Bible said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. May you be like a Noah in our generation. Hallelujah. May you be like Noah in this generation, in this 2020, 2021 following. May you be like Noah in your family. May you be like Noah in your business. May you be like Noah in your office. May you be like Noah in your school. Hallelujah. God bless you. May you find the grace. Grace means there has been an exemption. Grace means you have been exempted and there's no limitation. So Noah was exempted from his generation, not only by works or whatever, but he found grace. That is what the Bible said, for by grace we were saved. Maybe he was also righteous. Maybe he, he never defiled himself. He wasn't wicked in his heart and intent in the bad purposes. That is why God also chose him. So, you know, God brought him, chose him to be a preacher. Noah became in the book of Peter. Noah became 
a, a, a preacher of righteousness for over 120 years when God told him that I want to destroy this world but go back to them and tell them that there is a rain coming there is a storm coming to wipe away the surface of this earth he preached and preached over 120 years and they will never repent except himself his wife his three sons and then um, the in-laws that is all so in all there were only eight God told him to make an act so that they'll be saved when it start raining because the people never saw rain destroying this world they thought that, that this old man was a liar and he doesn't know what he's saying they never believe in him for several years they never paid attention to noah for the times of his his preaching for 120 years Today, what do we even see? You preach about good news. You preach about Jesus. And preaching Jesus irritates the demons in others' life. And they don't even want to pay attention to our preachings. They don't even want to hear about the good news. Why? The devil is manipulating them. The devil, the spirit of darkness is taking over their life. And they want to live a life of free will. I have my right. I have this. I have, that is what people are doing today. Instead of them to know that they have their will. But they have to also buy into the idea of God's will in their life. So are you living a life for yourself? Or you are living a life to please your creator? Only eight people were saved. The act stood for physical salvation during his time. He preached and preached and preached and he was warning them about what was coming ahead. But they never listened to him. But it did rain. Today the same thing. We are preaching about, sec the, about the second coming of Jesus Christ. We preach and still people don't believe. No matter who you are, still Jesus will come and you have to believe. And you have to also live whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you live for yourself, whether you are rich or poor, he will come. It is not because of you. That is why Jesus is not coming. He will come. If he came for the first time, then he will also come for the second time. He, he, if he came to die for you and I for our sins, remember that he's coming for rapture. He's coming to take us to his glory. So be prepared. You may choose to accept or not. I don't care. I have preached to you today. You are not the first person to reject the gospel. You are not the first person to reject the voice of God. Even during the time of Noah, they rejected the voice of God. And then they also faced calamity. They faced the judgment of God. So today, it is rather good to you. It's expedient unto you. It is rather for your benefit that you accept today. So that you move away from the wrath of God that is coming ahead. The, 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 that act stood for salvation physical to save them from the rain but it also stands for jesus christ who is the ark the ark is the source of eternal life and now jesus is our ark today jesus is like the Noah's ark today that all of us we have to make sure that we are in it we be in the ark we will be even animals entered into the ark and human beings were rejecting the preaching and the message of noah animals entered when he spoke to them and directed them, they entered. But today, when we ask people to enter into church, they find it difficult. They go to their workplaces. When they come to church, they give a lot of excuses. Listen, strive hard to enter into the ark of Jesus. Move into the ark of Jesus because it is the ultimate source of eternal salvation. Hallelujah. Today, I urge you, embrace Jesus today as the Lord. That is what Jesus said, as the days of Noah was, that the same thing shall be the latter days of his second coming you remember no one preached and preached they never accepted it was a sign for the second coming of jesus for the second coming and the judgment of this world judgment is coming no matter the years and then the days and man that it will keep for jesus to come maybe he wouldn't come as we are alive today or you and i or he will come for the next generation listen even when we are dead we shall still resurrect hallelujah so don't live a life for yourself don't live for yourself alone but live a life like noah in his days wicked men wicked men and women live but he was righteous he was faithful to god be faithful to god in your business be faithful to god in your family be faithful to god in your school at the workplace don't be corrupted hallelujah another person that his name was mentioned 
was Noah, uh, was um, Job. And I want to refer to Job chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Job chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Kiss God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good things from God? And shall we not accept adversity in all this? Job did not sin with his lips. Look, Job was one of the richest guys during his time and during his days but god wanted to use him as example to shame the devil job was a righteous person he had a good relationship with god but satan came in and said it's only because you've blessed job that is why he loves you when he take all the material possessions that you've given to him he will deny you look god gave satan the go ahead to, to attack Job from every means in, in the sight of God. God was using Job as a test to prove that Job will still be faithful. Can you still be faithful when you lose your properties, lose your kids, lose your job, lose your business? Satan attacked Job from north, south, east and west. His children died. He lost his business and even his health was even affected. He had sores all over the body. But the Bible said he never cursed and denied God why he was still faithful and he knew that god was still be with him his friends and everybody denied him but look at this richest man or rich man during his days he had a lot of friends but when the money and all things went away they denied him let me tell you people love you because you feed them people love you because they take advantage of your life the very day that they don't see any benefits from your life they will stop coming to you they will never come to you again Yes, they will never come to you again because you supply them good things. Some of them have selfish interest. That is why they take you as friends. When you come down and you have nothing, they will go away. Don't be proud. Don't boast yourself that for me, I have friends. Everybody loves me. Everybody is not everybody who loves you. Some of you, they love you because you feed them. The very day you cut the supply of feeding, they also go away. Look, what pains me most is even um, his wife came to him and said curse god and die he responded by saying that you speak like one of the foolish women i have ever seen god gave us good things and now we are facing adversity you are saying i have to curse god i will never do that i will never do that look sometimes wives let's be careful about how we handle our husbands in tough situations hey husbands we have to also be very careful how us how we handle our wives in a bad situation look we shouldn't agree come back come together and deny god the husband and the wife we should not agree no that is why most of the times you have to marry somebody who is spiritually greater than you don't marry somebody who's weak in the name of love at least when you are married consider salvation too hey so worry joining and quite the account you see the panel we japadie or waka rendova or time a bit me friend in some oh waria can you need power or when you have me i or then you may come as well the power of training me to job job training bb and on the rest of her domain i mean it was so you can see how you made a part brea and you would get now the bonnet body i engine and then the quality will be one of my the puppet be a japadie or bano a japadie a bad man or and penny first or dog a crazy crack a crack one is it can into the need to see can't not done who would make us oh make a bad man cramming no no one on the mini scar if you don't love the man don't take anything from him if you don't love the woman you see some men the young guys they'll go for old women sugar mommy why are you sure you are thinking about salvation and thinking about marriage they are not in for marriage this is business i see some marriages as business because the man has something the woman has possession that is why he is in love masanyo manenko obet dog you obey job and me demi from domini domi one way nyambu tran abi mu be do dog no ka so think when you are marrying think about salvation somebody who will stand to the end find somebody who shall be your partner that is why god told that's what god told um adam that he'll be your helper no that is what we need so please when we are married it's very important we don't know what will come ahead 
and we need people to stand people who are spiritually greater than us marry those people don't marry those oh nipa no no mo sami ame sakra no by the time i won't know no no kwa sakra oh nipa no no mo jot or pen ma or pen ma or you say me ame sakra no when nipa no no so sakra no that fit that jot so mo mbe insano so do mo jimbi so please marry people who are spiritually ahead of you either a man or a woman just find those and pray to god for him to lead you to such people so look job never sinned against god in all his situation look another man daniel i want to read look at what happened in the lives of daniel daniel chapter one daniel chapter one verse eight daniel chapter one verse eight but daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacy nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the chiefs of of the inners that he might not defile himself look daniel was in captivity he was daniel was in captivity he was also in bondage but remember he he had uh, the chance the opportunity to serve the king at the palace and his brothers were with the normal uh, people or with the common people but he had the chance to be at the palace and in the palace you know things are free he was treated special but he taught himself that although he is in captivity he was in bondage he will never deny god for god sent him to captivity look daniel look at this covid 19 covid 19 is even exposing some of our christians some of them are not christians we thought they were believers until covid 19 and yet some of you are not believers from day one you only went to church because people were going because you have nothing doing at home that is why i went to church covid 19 is exposing fake christians fake believers covid 19 Look, Daniel, no one was still not so yummy. He purposed in his heart that he would never defile himself. He had all the opportunity, he never blamed God. Daniel, one boy, I'm supposed to be a man, I'm going to assume, and so still assume, I'm going to say, or he may be an answer, now, but so some in February, come on, not that. Can you make that pronouncement? Can you make that uh, determination that although I'm still suffering, but I will never serve myself. I will never be cheap to people. Obu and watching the of Ampana. I go for Beban say Beban and Mwami. Beban only name on penu. In Sudi ni sika. On po biya on fadi sika. On fadi she. Oba no on penu. I go for Beru ebi no neti. I go for Koko ebi no neti. Sika ba ku yao. Adi e winti. I go chere ba ku yao. And I'm tired. Memre ko. Omre. Obuwa. Wow. So. Daniel was in bondage. He purposed in his heart that he would never defile himself. Or can he be said? Can you tell yourself? And now you to me come on any movie today. What what are we saying? We are not able to make a pronouncement and declare, renounce or denounce renouncing today. Last time over the weekends, I, I had a statement that the Pope from Vatican, you know, they want to talk about Pope talking about the leader of the whole college church. The, the college stands for the Universal Church, College Church. And when he said and he, he was endorsing same-sex marriage, show. Pope and Casa Crazy Gay, Trumu Trumu, and Meman and Meman Nakrano, or no Crawajatum. And I still ask myself, do you read 1 Corinthians chapter 6? I want to refer, we'll come back. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It's not about position, it's not about how influential the person is. A Meman and Meman, a man and man, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at from verse 9. Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulators, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals. A man, man, a man, man, a 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 man, a
Now Pope did not say, oh, we need to come back. Into my end, Lord said, look, it doesn't matter you, the Pope, a bishop, archbishop. It is not about you. It's about standing for God. That is why Jesus said, it's not everybody who says that Lord, Lord shall enter or inherit the kingdom. That is why Jesus also made another statement that many are called but few are chosen. Be brain a fro, maca crebin a palm, and your moses a radia radinina and enquire your mania. Be bold and read first Corinthians chapter six. Verse nine. Not that alone. Galatians. I want to read Galatians. It's about time that we have to be bold, like Daniel in the days of Daniel. Dan, uh, Galatians chapter 5 Galatians chapter 5 Look at the works of flesh Verse 22 I am reading from Verse 20 Galatians chapter 5 verse 20 following Okay let me start from verse 19 Now the works of the flesh are evident Which are adultery Fornication, cleanliness, leanness, lewdness, idolatry, social hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, ambition, dissension, heresies, envy, murder, drunken, uh, drunkenness, reveries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Adultery fornication uncleanness look if you are a gay or a lesbian this is unclean before god it's an abomination before god daniel purpose in his heart and for him he will never defile himself we have to be bold enough today to renounce sin and found in nippon no matter who you are you see when you make those when you declare such things you have definitely are going to have enemies like daniel daniel here when you know the new Daniel you win now actually to Jata Aminem that when he was doing all this, he rather attracted enemies to himself. And God also saved him when he was in the lion's den. It's about time that the church will preach righteousness. We, we have to stop preaching about breakthroughs and breakthroughs and prosperity messages. Look, we are preparing people to meet Jesus. Not to have crowd and not to have money to pay for whatever that we want or the pastor to be rich and stuff. No. If you can't preach righteousness, if you can't preach about the second coming, if you can't preach about holiness, stop that preaching. Stop that church. You were, you were called, but you were not chosen. That is why I said, if I see people having their calling, it doesn't move me. It doesn't change my mind. Have you been called or you've been chosen? Many are called, but a few are chosen. Some of us, we, we, we think about how we eat. That is all. We don't even think about the members. And even in this in this ministry, what do we even see? People are thinking about their promotions, promotions, how they rise through the ranks. But they are not even thinking about they are not even thinking about the members. Obi ko pensioner, obi jine isike bi appreciation whatever send off and on the nipa air jine ho on jine nipa on jine sa fumba ho derby on jine ho. Ni nipa no on jine retirement or call retirement kwa ne ene ya wa tini fees. Now when you are what what you feel, so you started the work of God of Eli. So from the from the one you came to the ministry, why your dad force the aquarium here? We have to be bold and tell people the truth. We have to stop doing those politics and stuff in the ministry of God. And to whom you know this, my brother is my sister, the person who served me. Listen, that is why we don't have power in the church. That is why we don't have miracles in the church today. Why we are doing brothers and sisters' ministry. It is rather we are doing industry of Jesus, not the ministry. Industry is about money, but ministry is about soul, soul winning. If you're not winning, so we are not preaching Jesus, and we don't receive the power. We don't receive the power. Miracles. Where are the real miracles today? The blind, their eyes, they will open. The lame will walk. The deaf and dumb will speak. If we don't see this in church, we are not doing church, brother. We are not doing church, apostle. We are not doing church, prophet. We are not doing. We are gathering people and making milking the members. Yeah, just keep your mouth shut, Now, as soon as Jesus will hold me now. One day we shall render an account before the Creator. We shall render account before Jesus, whatever that we are doing. So we have to be very careful. 
when you preach the good things when you preach about the righteous things when you expose the wickedness of people then you become a target of distraction they will make sure that they will eliminate you they will set traps to bring you down but i tell you god is with us that is why god called us and he has chosen some of us to preach look we are not afraid about anything we be fine home yeah can send here can if the preaching is against people or whatever their practices then we are not supposed to be there god has called us to another place which we have to hold on we go there and preach and we save them through the power of jesus we need the power don't fill stadiums without any stadium or stadia without any miracles real one that is why people in the church they are now going back they don't see it you can't preach healing and tomorrow somebody somebody is paralyzed lame and the person after preaching you go home in, in auditoriums, what do we even see today? We see um, language interpreters, or whatever, sign languages, and in the church of God, it, it tells you there is no power. It tells you no power. I'm telling you, no matter how great and influential the person is, no power. Because the Bible said, when Jesus called the twelve, he gave them power over unclean spirit and over every disease. Read Matthew chapter 10 or Luke chapter 9. If we are not experiencing this, it's the same calling that Jesus called the apostles. The same calling that we have also been called. It's the same anointing, same power. Nothing has changed. So we are supposed to work like them. If we are not working like them, hey, I don't care. There is something greater that we have to fight for. We don't need to fight about. You ran an account and the message that you preached as a pastor. And how you led people to Christ, but not about your send off party, your welcome, and every money, whatever that you want in life. And when wow, there's no salvation in that. When you die now, you never, you will never die. You never go away with a ring over your money, your mansion. You never die. People even inherit it. So why wouldn't you preach the good words? To the people for them to be saved like daniel he purposed he said that he will never define himself he knows that this body he has formed a covenant with god or the nipple do you know that our body when you read first corinthians our bodies are temple of god so this body is where god dwells in so when you purpose and you don't defile this body you don't put bad things filthy things in this body god will dwell in the body that's what the bible said greater is he that is in you god lives in us christ lives in us the holy spirit dwells in us so the trying god the truth they live in us so you don't need to defile your body he will never do that they will never do that so please that is why daniel Although he faced some challenges during his time, but Daniel chapter 6, verse 3, the Bible said, and Daniel had an excellent spirit. Daniel was raised. Yami began to the stand. He became the governor of the governors. He became the leader of all of them. He had an excellent spirit. He wasn't corrupt. Are you sure that you are not corrupt in your business? For Juma Awoye. Are you sure? Working in the government, in the office. Are you sure you are not corrupt politicians? Are you sure that you are not corrupt? If we were having the, the, the likes, we need the likes of Daniel today in our ministry. Not bad ways of making and reaching there. No, we need that spirit, that power, the excellent spirit in the likes of Daniel. This is what God is expecting us. Those who be faithful to the end, not to whom you know or those who know you. I know this man, I know this woman, I know this guy. Hey, I need money to promote you, promotion and a lot of uh, indirect way of influencing people. Or this car brand, or this car ton. And you know, crack say, you know, oh, brother, you be wage out. Kakre be into you, you be, you be done your job. Hey, a job party and this and your corrupt, corruption and bribery into you and can't no cream to any pan, any pan your money, you can't make it. Because you can't cap it. You also the brown family, you can't pay deep on it, but you can't make it. Not me. Me and me will be fair, you can't make it. A job party, you can't make it, you can't make it, you can't make it, you can't make it. For me, I'm too big for you to buy me with any material things, I'm telling you. You can't buy me with that. Although I have nothing, but you can't buy me. You can't buy the calling on my life. You can't buy the anointing. You can't buy the number of times that I have served God faithfully and up to date. I'm still holding on to my crown. Let's be like Daniel in our days. To reject and to renounce bribery and corruption. And that is why God also raised him. Doing this, you face challenges. 
I'm telling you, you face challenges, but God will still be with you. God will still be with you. He will never deny you. He will never reject you into the hands of anybody. Hallelujah. So please, I read about these three people who were able to hold onto their crown to the end. And God also blessed them. God raised them. That is why the book of Daniel, um, the book of Ezekiel, we are making references of them. Look, I want to give one or two keys or conditions for you to maintain your crown. First condition that I want to talk about is humility. A key for you to maintain your crown, place of influence, position of influence, uh, position of uh, place of prominence and honor that God gives us. One thing for you to maintain, one condition to maintain is humility. That is submissive mind. When you are submitted to God and when you are not proud, God will also lift you up. And you have a relationship with the living God. There must be a uniformity with God. There must be a unity with God. There's a deep, and also with people. There's a very big difference between unity and then uniformity. Look, uniformity. Let me take for me. I'm just giving an example, like a team, Manchester United. Just example. You know that they are united. That is uniformity. They all wear one uniform. Let's say red or with another color. It's uniform. So they are being identified as group uniform. But when there is no unity among them and every player is having a personal and selfish interest, they will never win their matches and trophies. That is, unity comes from within and it's from the heart. But uniformity is just from the outside and all boils down to one thing. That is humility. When there is humility, we move away pride. And selfish and personal interest. Look, I want to read a scripture from Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. It reads to 6 and 7. But Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 following. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in Christ Jesus. Which mind are they talking about? Or the scripture is talking about? who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Look, Jesus was with God. He was in the form of God. Remember that Jesus was from the beginning. In creation, Jesus was there. In the garden of Eden, Jesus was there. He was in the form of God. He was equal with God, but he never considered it robbery to fight and rise against God. No, because of the spirit of humility that is in him. Look, remember in creation, the Bible said Jesus, uh, God made a statement in Genesis chapter 1. Let us make a man. The word us is in the, in the Hebrew context is pure. And even in the Hebrew context, God is, is Elohim. Elohim. That is Elohim means it's plural. But the English word is Elohim. Elohim just one. But Elohim is plural word. So when you talk about Elohim in the in the Jewish context, it's a plural statement. Talking about doesn't refer to one God. So it refers to the triune God. God as an entity, a person alone never created. That is why I said, let us make a man. So he taught the triune God, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They gathered together to create man in image and after the likeness and jesus was in creation he started he was with god when they started creation jesus was god before coming to this world and that is why jesus is like a god manifesting in the flesh a god taking the form of man being in the womb of a woman coming life that is why death could not hold him captive death god don't die but he took the flesh of man to come as a man and as a person he came and the legal entry to this world is true only through the womb of a woman that is why jesus must pass through the womb if jesus doesn't pass through the womb of a woman then he's illegal and it's only demonic powers demons are illegal to operate on earth even spirit angels when god send them they don't keep long immediately after their works they go back because they are not supposed to live here forever so satan is illegal demonic powers principalities they are all illegal entities they are not supposed to live here that is why we have the power to cast them out this sphere or, or this nature which we live in is for human beings 
for people who have flesh and that's why satan will need a flesh lucifer and demonic powers they need flesh to operate through they need powers they need human beings to to possess them to use them apart from that they are illegal and that is why jesus had the power to cast demons out to heal people they are illegal yes demons are illegal they can't stay here i pray today that any demon any demonic power any spirit affecting your life by the powers of god in me i pronounce that you that demon you are illegal and you can't stay there i command you to come in the name of jesus yes i command you to come in the name of jesus i rebuke you the blood of jesus and i set this person free by the power of god then we read john chapter one the beginning was a word was a word the word was with god and the word was god then came from there um john chapter one there's one following to 12 and then 14 the bible said and then the word became flesh and dwell among us and we all beheld his glory this word is talking about jesus but from starting said in the beginning was the word the word was with god and then the word was god this word refers to jesus that is what the bible said that he was in the form of god equal with god who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He was equal with God, but they were not fighting against each other. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond, and rather were a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of man. He took him upon himself as a bond servant, as a slave. The bond servant means a slave. He never operated according to his will. That is why even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he wanted to quit, he said, Father, not my will, but according to your will. He saw death coming and he wanted to quit, but he said, Father, not my will. Jesus was a bond servant. He was a slave to God on earth. He was equal with God. He left his throne. He left his glory. He left everything that was there and he came down. Why? For you and I. He was rich but he became poor so that we will be rich. Riches that we are talking about is not about prosperity and it's about money. Any pastor who interprets to that anger is a prosperity gospel preacher. No. The riches talked about the spiritual things that he, he had in heaven. Not billions of uh, dollars and money. No riches of god the heavens and the atmosphere the reign of god over there and he became poor he left everything he became like a servant that's what the bible said let this mind be in you that is a mind a mentality of submissiveness that is what jesus had and he was able to maintain the crown to the end not only him alone look many people did that but listen jesus is just he is an example for you and i if we want to maintain our crown, the first condition that I, I, just, I just gave is humility. When you are humble enough in the sight of God, God will also lift you up. Let's make sure that we handle each other very well for us to be lifted up by God. Let me give you a story I heard from history about the life of Nelson Mandela. When he invited one of his colleagues to his office, his place or his home to be precise and then this big man came to the office of uh, to the house of mandela and they died they were they started eating mandela asked him Nelson mandela of south africa asked him now are you sure that he came alone he said yes i came alone and the only person that i came I, he asked him are you sure as they kept on eating are you sure he said no i came alone so Nelson mandela got in the story he stopped eating and he went to the car street and he called the driver they came and they ate together after everything, the driver thanked Mandela and he went away. He said, Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Look, the application is that to the friend of Nelson Mandela, the driver is irrelevant. He doesn't exist. He thought, Are you sure that you came? And he said, Yes, I came alone. He never even considered that he had a driver and he has had an exposure. So he must also be invited. Why? He, uh, Mandela invited him alone, the man alone, not the driver. So for him, the driver is does not even exist and he has even forgotten about the driver. What do you see today? Many people, when we have positions, when we have exposures, we forget to introduce others. We forget to treat others very well. It, it is only by chance 
it's only by the grace of God that is why, that is why you're having this opportunity. It doesn't mean that it's a merit and you deserve and it must be you alone, you alone. No. Mandela never did that. He had the heart of compassion and passion. He sacrificed for the people. He taught. He had the spirit of humility in him. Let's treat somebody well. Treat your brother well. Treat your sister well. Bury your pride. Bury it. Put it somewhere and treat human beings equal because when you are on your way up the ladder uh, the ladder the people that you meet over there is the same people that you meet when you are down on the ladder so please treat people well we have the maid you have a stepson stepdaughter whoever that comes at the home treat them well the exposures and opportunities you give to your kids give to the people outside treat them equally no discrimination nothing like black on white let's let's erase that black supremacy and white supremacy let's put them away we are all human beings and one day we will die and we shall be buried why do we want to strive and fight against each other what are we going to get and what are we going to gain look at currently what is happening even in nigeria a conflict civil war among the people what is what at all is wrong with us when we are humble we don't fight against each other we bury the pride we bury the differences so too i'm just using this platform again in this preaching to talk to our people who are in nigeria please let's handle each each other very well look somebody made this statement and to the people in nigeria and all over the world look if there is no enemy within the enemy without can never do us any harm yes and i repeat if there is no enemy within the enemy outside can never do us any harm what is application it's just talking about if we don't fight against each other nobody from outside can overcome us that is why if there's no enemy within we are rather fighting against each other and look at the whole country blacks fight a black fighting against a black a nation a nigerian fighting against a nigerian it, it, no it shouldn't be that we are one people one nation one country we are supposed to be together politicians and the civilians has come together Let's be together. Let's forget about what is happening. We are all blacks. We live in Africa. I'm not from Nigeria. At least, what is happening now, we, we, we also think about them. We are also worried. The last statement I want to talk about. Look, somebody made this statement again. That the enemy of black man is black man himself. I repeat, the enemy of black man is black man himself. Because we have now become enmity against each other. That is why we are fighting against each other. Politicians are saying this. Civilians are saying this. The people are saying that. And fighting one after the other. Let's end the war. Let's end that police or whatever brutality. It will rather, it will never uplift the country. Let me tell you that some years, years, years ago, Nigeria was one of the powerful nations in Africa. And now the trend has changed. So let me tell you, the more you are fighting, the more we are fighting. We are rather economically bringing the nation down. If you don't know, no investor will come there to make an investment. Why? The place is not conducive. The place is not safe. And I will never try being there. It affects the church, affects services, affects economy, affects the nation a lot. So please, let's come together. If there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can never do us any harm. And then the, the enemy of black man is black man himself. Remember the person who wrote Tens Fall Apart. He is a Nigerian. He said tens, when tens, uh, tens fall apart, the center can never hold. When the center can never hold, tens will fall apart. Chinua Achibi from Nigeria. Look at this. Make a reflection. Nigerians, please make reflections about this statement. And you see that all this worrying and troubles and fighting and whatever will go down. Please, one people, we pray for you. But we must also reason beyond. We shouldn't let people bring divisions. Maybe today is about this political party. Remember that one day it will change. Maybe today is about President Buhari. One day he will also move away. Another president, another party will come. And those of you that you have been... Uh, you have been convinced you have been bribed to fight remember that your party will go away let me ask you if it were to be your mom are you going to kill him your dad are you going to do that today is your party one day to come is going to be another party why don't we live together 
and forget and bury our pride be humble in the sight of the lord so that god himself will lift us up hallelujah god bless you god bless you my prayer my heart is with the nigerians and the people all over the world god bless you today god bless you forever um next week i'll bring to you the third portion or the third part of this message so don't go away like the page listen always continually from the radio or the fm station yes just do that very good invite your friends let them know share don't keep this message yourself share with people share now share forever god bless you in case you don't know jesus you haven't accepted jesus as the lord and the savior of your soul i'm giving this chance to pray this sinner's prayer after me repeat after me from your heart say dear lord i accept you as the lord and then the savior of my soul jesus wash me cleanse me make me pure and make me holy and my life will never be the same i accept you as the lord over my life make me right put on me the garment of holiness write my name in the lamb's boots of life that i will never my soul will never perish in the name of jesus god bless you finally brothers and sisters we need your support spiritual support and material support the little amount that you sow pastor this is what i want to do to support you. just do that please you see my contacts personal contacts moving on the screen scroll or moving on the screen just pick one any of them send me whatsapp message just make a call whatever pastor i want to support whatever that you're doing just do that please do that god bless you god bless you special greetings to my wife and kids my family and then fire one media team god bless you those in america those in europe any continent in africa hey i love you all i love you all let's pray father thank you for this message I pray that it will go down deep, it will sink to the heart of men and women. They, then they will understand the purpose for which they have to hold on to their crown for them to be saved in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. See you same time next week. Once again, I love you all. Bye bye.